All right, physics crew, Mr. Spencer here. Um, what I want to do today is just go over some things that we've, we've actually done before. You just didn't know it. So this is going to be about how we do acceleration calculations that are related to free fall. So let's, let's do this. Now, remember when we did our little, our little parachute experiment? So if we were doing motion maps of free fall versus the parachute, Ideally, when we do the, the parachute, it's going down at a, at a relatively constant velocity, okay? Pretty uniform there. Now, whereas with the free fall, we see in this motion map, there's some acceleration going on. So you already know this, but this idea that when objects are in free fall, they aren't going at a constant velocity, they're accelerating. So this is something that we've talked about in class and you've seen before, but I just want to emphasize it. We know that an object is in free fall when the only force that's acting on it is, is gravity. Now here on Earth, we have calculated it and for the most part, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second every second. Please, please do not say that gravity is 9.8 meters per second every second. It's the acceleration due to gravity that is 9.8 meters per second every second. Now, here's the other thing. That acceleration, regardless of how that object is moving, is always in the downward direction. All right? So it's we're going to say that it is negative. So we use that negative 9.8 meters per second every second as the acceleration due to gravity. Now, you remember this oh so well when we were doing the big four kinematic equations, when we would use these four to find different variables related to whatever it was you were trying to, to calculate for objects that were accelerating. Now, we're gonna use those exact same things, but this time, instead of having, instead of having just this open acceleration, when an object is in free fall, we are going to use this baby G as the acceleration due to gravity. That baby G, that negative 9.8 meters per second every second, is what we're gonna use for the acceleration of these objects when they're in free fall. So you've already seen these before, so let's go and let's take this and, uh, and just use some examples so that you can, can get used to practicing what you've already done, but with acceleration to gravity. So once upon a time, a long, long time ago, at Brooklyn Elementary in sixth grade, we took a trip to Toronto. I have no idea why they wanted to go to Toronto. It seems to me like this is just crazy. But one of the highlights of this time was going to the CN Tower. And my friend, Chris Chesney, said, hey, Dan, I heard that if you take a green peanut M&M, I have no idea why it was green peanut M&M, but if you take a green peanut M&M and drop it off the CN Tower, and it hit somebody, it'll go through their skull. So, needless to say, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything more about that. So let's just, let's talk about dropping things from the CN Tower. Now, a few things that will be helpful here. What we want to think of here is that where, like this spot right here, the observation deck, that's where we were and that's where things may have been dropped. Now, this right here, this baseline, okay, we're gonna call that zero. If it is traveling up, we're gonna call that positive. If it is traveling down, we are going to call that negative. Now, some, so some important things here. Any displacement or distance above this line is going to be a positive distance. Same thing with the final velocity or any velocities. Those will be positive if they're going in that direction. Also, if I'm holding that, okay, if I'm holding something there, that has an initial velocity of, of zero, okay? But as we go, as something falls from there, it's going to have a negative displacement. And similarly, the, the final velocity will also be negative. Um, but here's, and, and this is the last thing, 
this is just going to be implied. If something is falling, we don't have to tell you. You should know that the acceleration due to gravity, that baby G is going to be 9.8 meters per second per second in the negative direction. Okay, so these will be some things that we we will will use. Okay, so let's let's do this scenario. Let's say that sixth grade Mr. Spencer standing on the observation deck of the CN Tower and just happens to drop a green peanut M&M. Or actually, no, not drop. I'm tossing it up, tossing it up in the air, and it has an initial velocity of 14 meters per second. My question is, how long is it going to take to reach its highest point? So here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want, just like we did before, to take a look at those equations. What information do you have? What are you trying to find? And pick the appropriate, uh, the, the appropriate equation, remembering that our acceleration is that acceleration due to, to gravity. So in this case, we are when it says how long will it take, we're talking about time. So we are going to use this one right here. Okay, Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. But we're going to adapt that for free fall. So this is how I would set that up. Okay, I know that as that, that green M&M is being thrown up into the air, I have an initial velocity of, four, of a positive 14 meters per second. It's going up. Also, as it reaches its highest point at that instant, it's not going to have a velocity. So our final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. Also, while it isn't directly said, but it's implied, because this object is in free fall, because the only thing that's acting on it is gravity, that acceleration is going to be baby G, the negative 9.8 meters per second every second. And what we're trying to find in this case is time. So which of those equations has initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time? Well, we talked about this already, that final velocity equals initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So I know that my final velocity, like I said before, is zero. My initial velocity is going to be four, a positive 14. And then that acceleration, notice how it's negative 9.8 meters per second every second, and then times time. And then we're just going to solve for time. So in this case, we're going to take that equation that we'd used before in the, in the acceleration calculations or the kinematic equations and just use an acceleration due to gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second every second. And what I get is 1.4 seconds. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Here's another one, okay? Same situation. This time, I same scenario, but I want to know how high will it be at its highest point, all right? And we have initial velocity, we have final velocity, we have acceleration due to gravity. This time, we need displacement. We want to know how high up in the air that's going to go. So if... Okay, well, I messed up here. All right, we'll talk about this in a little bit. All right, let's go on to the, to the next one. Let's say that another scenario, sixth grade Mr. Spencer, he's standing in the observation deck of the CN Tower. It's 368 meters above the ground and accidentally, air quotes accidentally, drops a green peanut M&M off the edge. How long will it take to reach the ground below? So we're once again, we're talking about time here. Now, here's a little trick, okay? Remember how we talked about the observation deck, or the observation deck is zero? Well, when it comes to displacement, starting here and going down, our displacement is going to be negative. So if I'm all the way up here and I'm 368 meters above the ground, well, that means that the ground is negative 368 meters below me. So and if I'm holding it and I have that initial velocity of zero meters per second, the displacement's negative 368 meters, we're pretending that there's no air resistance, 
and our acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We're trying to find time. Well, the equation that has that is this one right here, that our displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus 1 half acceleration due to gravity times time squared. And if I were to go and put all of that in, which I'd like you to do, by the way, I'm going to get a time of 8.7 seconds. All right. <sighs> okay, last one. Same scenario. We're dropping our friend the green M&M, and we want to know how fast it's going to be traveling before it hits the ground. Now, you have to play pretend a little bit here. I... There, we're pretending that there's no air resistance, there's no terminal velocity or anything like that. It just accelerates and keeps accelerating until it hits the ground. All right. So in under these extremely simplified, uh, extremely simplified conditions, let's figure out what that final velocity is going to be. All right. So here's what we're given. We know that we have an initial velocity of zero meters per second. Once again, our displacement is negative 368 meters. We know what our acceleration due to gravity is. We've already figured out previously what the time is. Now we gotta find the final velocity. So if I look for a, an equation that has all of those things and I can figure out what it needs, um, I'm gonna use this one. Final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration due to gravity times time. And I get somewhere close to negative 85.3 meters per second. Ooh, okay. I know I went through that fast. I know that I messed up and didn't show you the work on that second problem. So we'll have to talk about that in class. But hopefully what this has done is just shown you that using the kinematic equations that we've already practiced a bunch in class, you can apply this to objects that are in free fall. And um, if you have any questions, come talk to me.